Okay, folks, hope everybody's doing good out there in YouTube land. I have finally received my Amazon package. Let me tell you what this is. This is a pump. Let me get to the right side here. I don't want to speak French. Let's look at this side. So this is made by Watts. It's on Amazon. I got it on a good, good deal, so I went ahead and picked it up, especially for these cold months right now. I've been thinking about putting in this type of a recirculating pump for a while now, and this one is one that I'm going to be trying. So this one hooks up at the hot water heater. It comes with all your fittings. Um, you've basically got the pump itself that sits on top of the hot water heater, plugs in. You've got all the uh, fittings right here for under the sink. And this valve goes in under the sink, and we'll go into that in a little while in this video. The valve goes in under the sink, and as the hot water comes, that valve has a special uh, valve inside it uh, that basically opens it up while there's cold water and then closes the connection on this side so that the water flows through your faucet or whatever. And uh, so, yeah, so I'm looking forward to this pump. Let's get started. Okay, folks, so here we are. We're up in the attic. As you can see, this is my hot water heater. And I've got the uh, hot water recirculation pump already installed. I uh, just went ahead and put it in line. Um, basically right here, this is, our, this is our hot water that leaves and goes into the, uh, into the house. It's coming out of the tank. This thing basically does like what every other video shows you, which is it comes on, it, uh, re it fills up the line so that you have hot water at every faucet. And there's also a valve that I'll show you later on in the video that's under my kitchen sink that basically is a bypass valve. So ideally what happens is your whole hot water loop or, or the hot side that goes to every tap in your house basically is one loop. In my case, in my house, there's two loops. So what happens is this hot water heater recirculation pump stays on and runs that loop and keeps that hot water going. There's a problem with this, though. The problem is, when you buy one of these pumps, and this is off of Amazon, was $200, it's a cheapie, it's a good pump, but it doesn't have any real electronics. So what ends up happening is your hot water heater gets that hot water that this pump is circulating back into the cold side, and that's the theory of it. But here's where the problem is. When that hot water fills up in that line and the bypass valve opens up, it comes back through and it comes back into your hot water heater on this line. This line right here is your cold side coming back in to the hot water heater. So essentially what happens is hot water comes in, your pump, your pump pushes that water into the tank and your hot water heater is now trying to warm that water back up. So what ends up happening? Your hot water heater runs like crazy. This is what I was trying to avoid. So I tested this and played with it for a couple of days and tried to understand how this thing is actually working. And so what I ended up doing is doing a little bit of research. And I looked online, there's several videos out there of people that use things like Stringify, um, basically to detect motion at certain bathrooms and then the pump comes on home automation systems. I tried all of those. I have a home automation system, but the whole idea of having the pump come on at the time that you're getting ready to take a shower or when you walk into the bathroom just isn't good enough, especially on a larger house where you've got a long run for the, uh, for the line. It's not going to give you instant hot water. The other option is, is to just leave this thing and run, in, in run, and and just let it run all the time that goes back to what i originally said which is it's now making your hot water heater work overtime to try and keep that water hot so you're basically killing your hot water heater and then finally if you look over here it's got it's got some options here where you can set it to on or to timer and you got all these little dip switches that you can set the time with there's a problem with that too so the pump will come on at specific times that you set. That means you have to do your showers and do all your stuff that requires hot water in those time frames. 
So ideally, if you're running it all day and shut it off at night, in the morning when you wake up, you have to have it set up for like, let's say 5 a.m. to get started and rebuild the hot water into the line if you want to leave at 6 o'clock for school or work. It's In our case, it didn't work. We take showers at different times. We use the water differently. We can't predict day to day what's going on. So that brings me to what I decided to do. What I decided to do is I decided to use some sort of a heat sensor that senses when the water is in the line hot and comes back here. When it ends up right here on this line as hot, I want that pump to shut off. So that pump is going to pump, fill up the line, and then by the time that hot water that left this pump and went all the way around the house gets back over here, I want it to shut off. So that is my solution. And the way I did that is there's a device out there made by a company called Inkbird, and it basically is a temperature sensing uh, device that actually works in the cloud with an app on your phone. You set all the temperatures and you basically have it uh, turn some device on and off. I, I have basically taken that sensor, and I, as you can see, I've put it right here on this line. Here's that, that sensor. This sensor basically detects minute, minute changes in temperature. So on this pipe, it's detecting that, that temperature change when that hot water comes back around and it shuts it off. Here's the device right here. And as you can see right now, my threshold is at 95 degrees. The current temperature at that sensor right now is 111 degrees. So what has happened is I, somebody has used a faucet or taken a shower. It's basically built that water line back all the way up to about 113 degrees, which passes my threshold of 95 degrees. So my pump is currently turned off. And the way this works, it's real simple. And I don't have all my wires neat because I just did this today. Um, basically what happens is my pump is in the run all the time mode. It's just in on. And then I've got the plug connected right here. You've got two plugs, one that says heating and one says cooling. I've got it plugged in into the heating. And so anytime somebody turns a faucet on and the temperature starts to drop because that water now is moving and is losing heat, this drops below 95 it causes the pump to come on as soon as that shower is done maybe six seven eight minutes later the pump shuts off because it has met that 95 degree threshold and this is all on the app and i'll show you um basically how it runs okay so guys this is the valve basically what it is is it comes from the hot side and the cold side it goes into the valve and then the other two that are up at the top, those go up to the faucet. And this bypass valve basically closes up and allows the hot water to go up to the faucet once it reaches that temperature. That also works with that pump. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and pull up the app. And when we pull up the app, we're going to basically go into the Inkbird app and you'll see where the temperature sits. So as you can see here, I've got two devices. I'm going to select my hot water heater pump device. And you can see that the line right now is sitting at about 106 degrees. Um, we haven't touched anything or done anything with it just for the purposes of this video. Um, so it's about 106, 108. You know, obviously it's up in the attic. So the ambient temperature in the attic makes a big difference. Um, what we'll do is we'll turn a faucet on. And as you can see, as soon as I turn the faucet on, um, obviously I'm going to get a little bit of cold water in the beginning. But within a matter of a few seconds, uh, I start to receive hot water. And as I'm using that hot water, you can see that that temperature on that return line is starting to shift. Because now we're starting to get cold water going back into the tank as we use the hot water on the other side. And what you'll see is right now, the reason why it says cooling is because it's the pump is turned off. It's only the cooling side plug on that Inkbird device that's on. So it's not really doing anything because I don't have anything plugged in on the cooling side. But as soon as we pass that 95 threshold, there you go. The temperature just dropped enough 
on that line to where now the pump is on. That pump now is running and is going to try and rebuild that line up to the correct temperature. And so we'll watch it, you'll start to see it drop, and you'll start to see it come back up once I turn that faucet back off. So let's, let's bear with it for a few seconds. You'll see it drop in the 80s. It, uh, when I take a shower, it drops down to about 67, 68, depending on what the outside temperature is, um, because then that's just straight cold water coming in straight into the house from the outside. And, uh, and then you'll start to see the, uh, the device build it back up. One thing to note also is that while this pump is running and you're taking your shower or you're using the faucet, because that pump is running, it is pushing hot water like crazy to your, to your point, to your faucet or to the shower. So just by adding this pump, the showers are so much nicer because as soon as you touch the uh, temperature adjustment valve uh, on your shower, it's instant hot water. It's actually really great. Okay, so now the shower has, or not the shower, but the faucet has turned off. And as you can see, the temperature is going to start climbing again. And once we pass that 95 threshold, you'll see it turn back off. So we're still holding at about 91 degrees. It's still building up that loop. Obviously going through the bypass valve and putting hot water back into that line. Getting, getting that cold water um, pushed back in into the hot water heater. This is cold water that normally without this pump would be lost. Would be just down the drain and you would be paying for it. Essentially what's happening here is even when the water is cold, because of the system, it's going back in into the hot water tank to be reheated so we just passed the 95 and there you go at 96 it shut off so my pump is off now and that took literally a couple of minutes at most okay so here i have my thermometer i'm basically going to take this thermometer and i'm going to Turn it on on the cold side. As you can see, under the cold side, you'll start to see it drop. And we dropped about five degrees. The ambient temperature outside right now is about 75, 80, so this is about right. Now, when we turn on the hot side, you'll see the difference. And you can see the water is holding at a steady 106, 108 degrees.